Since July, the James Webb Space Telescope has been sending us stunning images from space with never before seen detail and clarity. But how does that data go from the depths of space to color photos here on Earth? Klaus Pontapadon is chief project scientist of the James Webb Space Telescope, leading a team of 30 expert image manipulators. And he joins us tonight. Klaus, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. I know for me, it has been breathtaking to see some of these images. In fact, I've got one uh, in the background of my phone right now. It really puts our small place in the universe into perspective. What's it been like for you working on this project? Well, it's been it's been amazing. It's been an amazing ride. We've been getting data like this for about six months now, uh, and it's just been in incredible. Sometimes our team we're looking at each other and we're going like, How, you know, why do we get to do this? <laughs> it's definitely got to got to be an honor. And and whenever we say image manipulators, what does that mean? Sure. So so I guess you're referring to these beautiful color images that we have all seen. Uh, so when we get images down from, from JWST, they don't look like that. Um, it's not like taking your digital uh, camera out on your phone and snapping a picture. There's a lot of work that has to go into making them, making them look like that. It's an incredible sensitive instrument. And so it means that when we get data down, there is, uh, there's, there's, there's artifacts, there's signatures in them. And we don't get color images. We take images through filters with the camera. In fact, this is how every digital camera works in, internally. But we take them one at a time. So we use a filter that filters out a specific infrared color, another filter that filters out another infrared color. And then afterwards, we can combine them uh, to make these beautiful color images that you see. So what does the raw data look like? And how are you able to say, oh, this is something important or, oh, this is junk. We don't need that. Yeah, so it, it's, a, it's a very um, detailed and careful process to figure out what we take an image of. I mean, it's a big sky. And uh, uh, obs other observatories, such as, for example, the Hubble Space Telescope has helped us a lot in figuring out, well, you know, there's something that looks really awesome with Hubble there. It's going to look different with Webb. And let's do so let's take an image of it and see what it what it looks like. So it's, it's a long process to, to do that. Now, when you say long process, how much work does it take to turn this this information and this data into these masterpieces? So it takes about uh, six weeks or so or maybe four or five, six weeks. Uh, from we're we're getting uh, data till we have a, a beautiful color image. Uh, that's about the time we spent on those first images that came out in uh, in July. And now Has, we can do it a little faster because now we know what we're doing. Right, practice makes perfect. Right. Has there been anything that has surprised you or, or caught you off guard with with some of this information? Yeah, I mean, the observatory was originally built to to really to understand our our origins, and I mean origins in different different ways. Uh, it was built to understand our cosmic origins, which is you know, where do galaxies come from? What does a galaxy like the Milky Way look like in the when it was first forming in the beginning of the universe? And one of the things we were finding, which was really surprising to a lot of people, is that uh, galaxies seem to grow up very quickly. So you go back to the to the edge of the universe very early, like any telescope, James JWST is also a time machine. It looks back in time. You can see what happens in just a few hundred million years after the the, the universe formed and the Big Bang, someone than 13 billion years ago. And we walk in there, and we expect it to essentially see a nursery. And, but we, we in our nursery, we essentially have uh, fifth graders walking around. The galaxies seem to grow up faster than what, what we thought they would. And that is a big surprise. One thing that you mentioned before, and I want to kind of circle back to, is, is how sensitive and complex this machine is. And, and I know there's a lot of space junk and debris out there and things that you have to make sure you protect it from. I, I did see a, a story recently where it did get hit with something. Does this concern you or, or are you really confident in how it was constructed that uh, this is going to be able to last a long time? Yeah, yeah, no. So you're right. It's an incredible sensitive machine. It's about 100 times uh, more sensitive than something like like Hubble, for example, which also means that you know whenever we point it somewhere, we see things we've just never seen before. We've never been this sensitive. Um, so you're right that that out where it is uh, in a place in space called L2, which is about a million miles from Earth, it is out in the solar system, and the solar system is filled with little grains of dust. These are these tiny, tiny things. Um, and so it's just sort of the, the price of doing business out there is that once in a while, your spacecraft will get hit by one of these little dust grains. And so it's built into the design 
of the spacecraft and this big, uh, big 21 foot mirror that it has that, that once in a while it's going to get hit. Um, and so it will have a lifetime for that reason, but that lifetime is expected to be many years. Now, is there anything big that you're working on now or coming out soon that you can give us a little sneak peek and tell us about? Uh, yeah, it's always hard to uh, to give too much away, um, but I, I know that there's a lot of uh, really exciting stuff. I remember that those first images that came out in July, uh, those were done over just a couple of days. Since then, we've been working 24-7 for, for five months, and we've observed um, you know, everything from the solar system. You know, may have seen a beautiful image of Jupiter, the new observations of Saturn, for example, uh, and all the moon systems of those. Um, and even deeper images of the of the distant cosmos. Again, the first these deep images of galaxies that we saw, they were not actually that deep. We just spent like an hour or two on them. And now there are, there are data that are coming out that go significantly uh, deeper, many hours. Um, and so that'll be very exciting to see. So, so look and keep a look out for that. Exciting indeed. We definitely will. Klaus Pontapadon, Chief Project Scientist of the James Webb Space Telescope. Thank you again, and, and please keep up the great work. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out these other videos here and be sure to subscribe for new content and the latest weather news from AccuWeather.